My talk is basically focused on Yorkshire, really, um, because we're here in Leeds. We're part of the Leeds International Festival, and we want to kind of big up uh, Yorkshire and the North, really. Um, what a brilliant place it is to make games. Because when I was growing up, it was very different. The, the games were being made in the region, but I didn't know how the heck to get a job in the industry. So I want to make sure that everybody here today knows how to do that. So that's me, aged uh, about 10 years old. Um, playing on a computer that's probably older than everybody in this room, uh, called a Tandy TRS-80. And I just got um, hooked into playing games from a very early age. I, I loved playing games, and I always wondered how to get a job. And I remember my, my dad telling me, you know, I'd be, it'd be a beautiful day outside, and I'd have my curtains welded shut and, and uh, be playing games on my ZX Spectrum, saying, why, why are you playing games? You'll never get anywhere um, playing games. Uh, I ended up uh, getting a job in the industry as a games journalist. I uh, joined a multi-format magazine back in um, uh, 2000 called Arcade. And then I joined various magazines and websites, official PlayStation 2, uh, and ended up editing a magazine called PC Zone, uh, which Charlie Brooker used to write for. And uh, just had a brilliant time in the industry. And uh, I ended up going to amazing places around the world. Stayed at uh, Skywalker Ranch uh, when Star Wars Episode Two was being made. That was very exciting. Um, I've been to uh, Shanghai, I've been to meet um, Epic Games. Uh, it's been a really, really good fun um, time uh, in the games industry. And that was from just being uh, from Bishop Wilton uh, in East Yorkshire. So if, if I can get there, then everyone else can. A little bit about Game Republic. We're a games industry network for companies and universities in Yorkshire and the North. And we run events every month. Uh, we just had one two days ago where we had guests from Sega and um, I think PlayStation were there as well. So we, have, we basically bring folks like Microsoft and Sega and Sony and Nintendo into the region for them to meet our games companies and do business. And that's what we do. And we promote the region's games industry as well, which is why doing events like this is so fantastic, because we put the spotlight on the industry. I also do other stuff. Um, I don't know if anybody, uh, anybody here has been to the Yorkshire Games Festival in Bradford, but we, um, we helped to program that event and um, lots of other stuff as well. Uh, anything geeky games happening in the region, I'm usually involved in it. Um, cool, right, quick question. So I, I've kind of given some big clues uh, <laughs> about this now, but um, where in the world and I need the town or city where, where are these games made. So, does anybody know what this game is? Yeah, Red Dead Redemption. It's number two, actually, Red Dead Redemption 2. So, where is, it, where is that game made? Yeah. Well, you mentioned Rockstar Leeds, which is good. Very good. Because usually, uh, a couple of years ago, when I used to ask this question, people say, oh, America must be made in America which is, you know, it's good that we're hearing more people saying, saying leads. Uh, anybody know what this game is? Yeah. Crackdown, that's right, it is. And uh, anybody know where that game is made? Yes. So, Mo Sheffield, this is brilliant. This, this is great. We've got an educated crowd. Great. Yorkshire crowd. Fantastic. So, yeah, that's it. So, um, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, um, made in Leeds, but also, obviously, we've got to get, give credit to uh, uh, Rockstar in Edinburgh and San Diego and all their studios around the world. But, yeah, Rockstar Leeds have a major part to play in that game. And Crackdown, yeah, made in Sheffield by Sumo. And, uh, obviously, we've got Z Peters uh, after me talking about level design. So, that's going to be uh, really interesting. But, yeah, made right here in Yorkshire. And these are just as kind of examples of some of the games that uh, are made here in the region. Um, we've got Sonic Racing games. We've got um, Broken Sword made in York by Revolution Software. We've got all the guys here showing games off Positron. We've got a brilliant game. Chris Jeff there showing Squishy Sports, all made in Yorkshire in the north. Um, so it's fantastic. We've got all these companies making games right here. And these are just some of the ones in, in Yorkshire. Um, Cooperative Innovations are co-hosting this event today, uh, make fantastic VR stuff based in Leeds. Obviously, we heard from Team 17, but there's lots of other companies. You, you might have heard of their games, but you, you probably didn't realize they were based in Yorkshire. So, for example, um, Bone Loaf. Has anybody heard of Gang Beasts? Have you played Gang Beasts with the little jelly fighters? Yeah, it's a really brilliant game. Made in Sheffield. So they're based in Sheffield. And we've got Beta Jester, who are based in York and Hull, and uh, Insight, who are based in Wakefield. Loads and loads of companies based all over the region. Um, more than 150, actually. So I'm not going to go through all these stats, but um, the games industry is currently worth 
5.7 billion pounds. We hear a lot in the news about the fishing industry um, and, you know, with, with the B word, Brexit, and how much the fishing industry is worth. The fishing industry is worth two billion quid. We're worth nearly three times what the fishing industry is worth. Do we get the coverage in the news? Maybe not so much, but we are. So there you go. 9% uh, of the UK's development workforce are employed in, York, are employed in Yorkshire and Humber, which is a really healthy figure. Uh, and yeah, we've got um, officially nearly 150 companies in the region, and those are companies that are actually formed as companies, but I know there are at least two or three times that because there are lots of smaller companies who are under the radar doing brilliant stuff and we don't know about them, or they just keep themselves to themselves. So, yeah, we've got at least sort of, 300, 400 companies. And we've got some fantastic universities and colleges here. It's so great. We've got um, like Leeds City College, and we've got University of Leeds, and uh, Wakefield here today, and... You know, we've got some fantastic Leeds Trinity. So we've got some fantastic courses right here in the region, some of the best, actually, and 16% of all games courses. Um, just wanted to quickly talk about some of the trends that are going on in the industry. So obviously, um, AR, VR, MR, all the kind of ARs and MRs are going on uh, at the moment. Uh, you can see some of the VR, obviously, in the Tetley over there. It's... Um, going through lots of different phases, and there's always new hardware coming out. Um, I was talking to someone earlier about Oculus Quest, which is a new standalone uh, Oculus headset. It's coming out in about two weeks for about £400, and that's completely standalone headset with controllers, and it's got full six degrees of freedom, so you can you know, zoom in on things and look around, and that's £400, which is amazing. So there's constantly new innovations coming out in VR. Different business models, obviously. Everyone's heard of free-to-play. You might have heard of loot boxes. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, DLC, lots of new ways that games companies can make money. Because it's important. They need to be able to make money out of the industry. Otherwise, <laughs> they won't survive. So it's really important that we get new business models uh, that people can um, um, sell their games. You might he uh, have heard of games as a service. If not, um, there's a handy acronym called GAS, uh, which is nice. Um, these are games like Destiny, Call of Duty, Overwatch. They're basically games that you play for months, years even, and they keep updating with more um, characters and levels and keep you playing that game for a, a certain amount of time. And also, obviously, Nintendo Switch is doing very, very well at the moment as well. And that's um, a picture of Seb at Sumo uh, when he was first showing off his game Snake Pass on the Switch. That was made by Sumo. A couple of other things, eSports obviously is huge. Um, every time I update this figure, it gets bigger, but apparently it's worth nearly $700 million now. Streamers, obviously, YouTube. Um, we had Alicia earlier on today talking about uh, making video content. That's huge. I've got friends who uh, are making two, three times what they used to earn as a magazine editor, making their own YouTube channels, which is fantastic. Uh, anybody know who that is, by the way? On the, uh, there's a YouTuber in the bottom left. Stampy Cat, Everyone, anyone heard of Stampy Cat? He does Minecraft videos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and obviously, uh, multi-platform, games are everywhere now. You've got PC, PlayStation, Switch, um, everything. Your mobile games are everywhere. So a couple of the uh, challenges. Uh, in the region, we do have uh, skills recruitment issues. You know, we want more people, more diverse people in the industry. So we're always looking for people to uh, come and get jobs in the industry. Access to um, investment is quite difficult here. There's more opportunities in London, I would say, for uh, VC and uh, that's venture capitalists and investments. Um, but it is getting better, but we still need to kind of address that imbalance, getting more investors to come up to the region and invest in our games. And things like political uncertainty, uh, I'll skip over that, but yeah, that's me banging on in the Yorkshire Post about uh, the dreaded B word. We've got an issue in Yorkshire as well about the size of the region because there's a lot. I mean, games companies based everywhere in Scarborough, in you know, up in uh, in, in in Hull, in everywhere, right across the region. So it's um, so part of Game Republic's job is to really to link those people together and also to link up with um, folks in the northeast and northwest as well, so we can all kind of learn from each other and uh, grow the industry up here in the north. Discoverability is a huge issue. Um, this is a figure from 2017. But uh, in that year, there were more than, well, 7,672 games released on Steam. I mean, that is a ridiculous number of games, and that's just on Steam. 21 games per day. So you imagine how difficult it is for a games developer to get noticed amongst all that. So it really is an issue. 
And diversity, you know, we want more women, uh, more folks from different ethnic backgrounds, from um, all sorts of backgrounds. We want them to come and join us in the industry and make better games. So you've heard a bit today about how to get into the games industry um, as a games maker. And I kind of touched on it a bit when uh, Chloe was uh, speaking earlier. But the, um, the big thing is really, are you making games? Because the number one thing I always hear from companies who are recruiting and looking for people to come and work for them is that, yeah, you might have a qualification. You might come out of a university with a, you know, a good degree and some fantastic universities and colleges here. But they want to know what else you've done as well. So if you've just been on your course for t three years, four years, and you just come out and say, yeah, I've made these games on my course, it's not as impressive as someone who hasn't been to university and has also released two or three games on iPhone. You need to be working on games and making games in your spare time. And if you can't make games, you can't program or you can't do art or whatever, get together with some teams. There are plenty of opportunities of uh, working on games in game jams and uh, things that are around the region that you can get involved in um, to make games. It really, really does make a difference. So if you are passionate about the games industry, you need to be making games or writing about games. You know, if you want to get into games media, write a blog, show that you're writing about games. Because if you want to get a job in media, if you're not doing what you're doing in your spare time, then there are, there are thousands of other people who are doing that. And they are the people who will get the jobs. So it's really important. I've got two examples here. These are both from actually uh, Huddersfield University. They uh, set up their companies in their first year at university. And by the second year of university, they were signing deals with PlayStation and Microsoft. So they were still at university and already releasing games. So that's kind of what you're up against. You know, you need to be, it's a very competitive industry. And you need to be making games. You need to demonstrate your passion. Um, tons and tons of free games development software out there. Uh, Scratch, Game Salad, Game Maker is really good. I've had a potter around with that, uh, made a really, really rubbish game. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's tons and tons of um, games development software out there that you can make stuff. You don't need to be good at art or programming. You can actually just get stuff together. Uh, there's a brilliant game called Hotline Miami. I don't know if anybody's played it. Fantastic game, made in Game Maker. Game Maker is, I think, about 60, 70 pounds, I think. But you know, you, the people who made that, they didn't have any programming experience. And I, I know loads of people who've made games, don't have any programming experience, you know, and are releasing brilliant games on, um, using Game Maker. Um, Alicia already mentioned uh, Mark Brown's uh, Game Maker's Toolkit, but it really is a fantastic YouTube channel. It really goes into uh, how to make games and the, um, the kind of detail of, uh, of level design and everything. It's, it's really, really good. So it's, it's an excellent one to kind of look at if you want to learn more about the kind of craft of making games. So yeah, these are just uh, the top tips, really. Uh, learn about making games. Um, YouTube, um, do courses you know, at school, university, and college. If, if you're not having anything at school, if you haven't got anything at school, have a word with the teacher. Say, why aren't we doing any programming in schools? You know, they should be. <laughs> uh, build teams, make games, release them. It doesn't matter if they're not very good when you're starting off. It's just good to get that experience of going through the process of releasing a game on iPhone or Android. Create awareness for your games. Um, I did a talk the other day about um, doing a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. Um, for example, if you want to do a, a crowdfunding campaign, you need to be planning it about six months before and making sure that you're involved in um, your social media and getting fans of your game, showing GIFs online, you know, showing the game off, and, and maybe even releasing early um, demo copies of your game just to get it out there. Um, so you need to be building your, um, your community really early in the process of making a game. Um, network, yeah, I mean, the fact that you're here today and you're meeting games companies and, and playing games is, is all about the games industry. It, a lot of it is like meeting people and it, we're very friendly, you know, we're very approachable, most of us. Um, so you can come and chat to us about how to get in, into the industry and we'll help you. You know, we want young people and from different backgrounds to come into the industry. Come and ask us, you know. And it's important as well to learn about the business of games because a lot of companies... Um, come out of university perhaps and they, they're passionate about the, their projects and their game but they perhaps don't know about things like marketing, pitching a game, how to raise money, about milestones, what milestones are, you know, um, the actual budgeting of games and, and running a company because the, the companies that, that last are the ones that can actually make money. You know, it's, it's, it's all fine making games but if you want to 
make games long term, you need to be making money. So it's important that you learn about the business. And this is something that I always say as well. Work hard, be nice. We're quite a small industry, and we are approachable. It's just be friendly and nice, uh, and work hard. That's it, really. So I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, Alicia's also mentioned a lot of this as well. But there are tons and tons of different jobs. It's not just about programming and arts and things, which are very important, obviously. But um, you know, I'm a chancer. I, I don't play uh, any uh, <laughs> I don't program. I don't make art or anything. But uh, I love games. I'm passionate about games. I can write about games. That's how I got into the industry. But I'm now mostly organizing events and doing talks. So you know, you can really, once you're in the industry, you can pick and choose what you want to do. It's exactly what Chloe said. You know, once you're in, in the industry or you're in a company, you can, you can you know, actually join as a QA and think, actually, I quite fancy doing audio or I quite fancy being a producer. It's like once you've got that foot in the door, that's when you can really choose to do what you want to do. Um, just a little bit about salaries. I think uh, it was mentioned earlier, but um, this is from a couple of years ago now. But the average salary is about 33,000. Uh, it's gone up a little bit. Uh, junior coders can expect to be sort of early 20s, uh, thousands. Junior artists, a little bit more. Uh, obviously, studio heads um, earn quite a bit more. But these are, you know, I mean, it, it varies wildly. You know, I know people who who are, have earned, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds making games. And if you work for a bigger company, you get uh, sometimes you get a share of the money that's made uh, with that game, so you can earn hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds. Um, and I know, uh, I remember when I first got this job in Game Republic about 10 years ago, I met a games developer who was very wealthy, you know, he made a lot of money, but he said, if you get into ga the games industry because you want a Porsche, you're in the wrong industry. Because it, the people that get into the industry, the people that make the games, they get into the industry, as I did, because they love games. That's why you do it. And, and if you're good and you're passionate, the money will, will come, hopefully. <laughs> Not always, but hopefully it will come. But that's the main thing. You don't really get into the industry um, set out because you want a Porsche. There are other industries like banking where you can make two, three times, if you're a programmer, uh, what you make in the games industry. So you, get, you do it because you love it. And... Yeah, while the, um, you know, sometimes the pay isn't as good as some other industries, I mean, we make games for a living. We're working in the games industry. Uh, this is a really friendly, fun industry to be in. And, yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. I absolutely love it. I've been do in the industry now for 20 years this year, and I absolutely love it. And I, I'm not doing anything else the rest of my life. You know, I just love this job. Uh, that's it. So if you've got any questions, um, put your hand up and I'll uh, answer, try to answer them. Thank you very much. Right, got a couple of minutes if you've got any questions, otherwise I'll get off the stage. <laughs> yes. Oh, I think we've got the mic. Yeah, Polly's got the mic there. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if there's such a job in the game industry as like... Um a bit like a conceptual artist, like a bit like a producer, but in, in a game sense. Like they come up with ideas for games, um, you know, do storyboarding, um, come up with characters. Yeah, just 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 the general kind of whole idea of a game. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, certainly. So, so, I mean, for some of the smaller companies, that maybe two, three people, you'll do a lot of different jobs. So I mean, it's you know, we put these jobs up like QA and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of the smaller companies, you'll have people who. Our programmers are also maybe designers, producers as well, audio. You know, a lot of the smaller companies, if you join a smaller games company, you'll have an opportunity to do a lot more stuff because you'll get kind of pulled in to do different, different things. But there are obviously roles for concept artists, particularly in this region, actually. We, are, we don't have so many really good concept artists. And I know that, for example, Revolution, who make the Broken Sword games, use a lot of really great background art. Um, they were needing you know, a con really good concept artist. So, yeah, there are, but I wouldn't expect to just walk into a job like that straight out of university or whatever. It's something that you might have to aspire to or, you know, get some experience yeah. doing that. Unless you're really, really, really good and then you'll just get s snapped up. <laughs> sure, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, um, I was just wondering if there's like a comprehensive list anywhere of all of these different game companies, if that's something that you at uh, Gaming Republic or 
Yeah, um, um, if, there's actually a couple of places you can go. There's, um, on our Gaming Public site, there's a list of um, developers. It's, it hasn't got everybody on there, I have to say, because some of them don't have logos. <laughs> it's as simple as that. But um, if you, Yuki as well, the National Games Organization, they have the Yuki Games map. So if you look up Yuki, Yuki I think it's yuki.org.uk, I think it is, and they've got a games map. And you can focus in on Yorkshire, and you can see where all the games companies are in the region. And we, we helped put that list together. We worked with UK and the BFI to make sure that we've got um, you know, all, all the list of companies there. And there's places in the northeast there. You can focus in on the northwest as well. It's just got all the kind of where the, all the games companies are based. And we're, we're, we're trying to update it. The problem is keeping updating it because you get new companies all the time. I met two new companies the other day I never knew existed in, in Yorkshire. So it's constantly keeping that list updated. But yeah, if you go, if you go on UK on Game Republic, we've got links to a lot of the companies uh, and universities and colleges as well. Great, thanks. Okay, probably time for one more. Yep. Oh, not you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was going to say, um, with how important networking is with um, being in the industry, uh, do you have any suggestions for kind of local networking events that happen for people to maybe kind of meet people in industry? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, certainly from the point of view, if, if you're... Uh, 18 plus. I mean, there's there's Leeds Games Toast, for example, which uh, a good friend of ours, Andrew Crawshaw, runs, and it's uh, he has regular meetups um, um, at pubs every month uh, in Leeds, where you can just go and meet games developers, and it's free. You just turn up. You know, you don't have to register or anything like that. So you follow at Leeds Games Toast on Twitter. Uh, they also have morning events as well, because not a lot of people like going to pubs. Surprisingly, I don't know. I haven't met them yet, but uh, but no, you can actually go and have uh, like a morning coffee or something as well and, and so he has those meetings again once a month uh, there's also uh, if, if, you're, um, if you're making games uh, you can join Gamayo which is Game Makers Yorkshire so if you go on gamayo.co.uk there's information on there about how to sign up again we have our meetings tend to be in, in pubs so uh, you have to be 18 plus but um, uh, have a look there the only uh, criteria is that you have to be making games that's it or involved in games in some way um, and provide information there about you know stuff that you've done and artwork that you've done and things like that and obviously, if you want to join, plug, plug, Game Republic as well, uh, which is as little as £100 a year for individuals to join the network. But there are other things as well. You know, Yorkshire Games Festival uh, is a fantastic place to go and meet developers. Uh, there was the Play Expo the other day by our friends uh, over there at Replay who uh, happened in Manchester uh, the other week. Fantastic event. You can go and meet loads of games developers and ask them about getting jobs in the industry. So there's, there's lots going on. You just have to kind of, um, you know, look on Twitter and find out what's going on. But everyone's friendly. You can go up and, and chat. Cool. Add to that. Yeah, uh, quickly. Yeah, sorry. Just really want to add to it. So we, we know that Yuki has got a platform for you to find game companies. Do you know if anyone's trying to, because you're just mentioning all these different communities, all these different festivals, is anyone trying to consolidate them down onto one page? Because that's yeah, I think, insane I think, I think to find I think there is, yes. I think I saw um, Andrew Crawshaw again, I think, had linked something. So what I'll do is if you follow at, at Game Republic, after this event, I'll tweet out the, where all the events are happening and all the different organizations around awesome. Uh, Yorkshire in the northwest and northeast. So wherever you are, you can find someone near you that can help you get into games. I mean, we've got um, in Hull, there's Humber Bundle, for example, and they meet every month uh, in Hull. And there's, there's meetups in virtually every city and town in the UK. Uh, right, uh, before the <laughs> rain uh, descends even further, I think uh, I'll stop there. But um, I'll be back in about sort of five minutes to introduce uh, Z Peters um, from Sumo Digital, who's going to talk about uh, level design. So thanks very much.